This is Tropical Depression 13, which formed this morning, designated by the National Hurricane Center. It is expected to become an intense major hurricane over the next couple days as it shifts westward. But what happens after that, and will it pose a threat to the East Coast? Hi guys, I'm John with New York Metro Weather. Today is Tuesday, September 5th, and you are looking at a visible satellite imagery of Tropical Depression 13, which has just formed in the eastern Atlantic Ocean. Some spin and a low-level circulation has developed with this storm, and the Hurricane Center says it's now a tropical depression and may even become a tropical storm as soon as later today. The official forecast right out of the gate is really impressive for what is about to become tropical storm and eventually Hurricane Lee. The National Hurricane Center says this storm will track westward into very warm ocean waters with limited wind shear and a great setup for the storm to strengthen. And as a result, by the time we get to this weekend, the Hurricane Center is explicitly forecasting this to be a major hurricane. Currently looks like it'll pass just north of the Lesser Antilles and north of uh, Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, but we'll have to watch this track really carefully. The first thing to talk about here is just this strengthening forecast for this storm, which is now expected to become a major hurricane. Looking at the tracks and the ensembles for this system, we like to use what we call a super ensemble. So that takes all the different weather models that we know and love and combines their ensemble members and we can take a look at all of them. So here comes the track, the next several days of this system, we know it's strengthening. Good agreement that it's gonna track north of the Lesser Antilles right now, but if you're in this region, you have to watch this really closely. You don't wanna be messing around with this storm, which is tracking just north. Any even slight adjustments will make a big difference. Difference. Then the system continues to strengthen, moves into the southwest Atlantic Ocean, and the models say at this point it's going to start to recurve to the north off the east coast of the United States. But what's causing that? Why is the models uh, you know, suggesting this recurve? If we go and look at the synoptic setup of this storm, we go and look at what's going on in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. And here is future Lee as it's simulated on Saturday afternoon, right here. To the north of it, we have this big ridge, this big red area. It's steering the storm this way because the flow around a ridge is clockwise, right? The high pressure here is steering the, the, the storm this way. And initially, it's also blocking the northward escape. The storm cannot go north. But if we roll forward and we look at what it shows early next week, that ridge dissipates a bit and there's a window for Lee to move northward and escape out. And that's what some models show is that that storm will eventually end up way off the east coast harmlessly out to sea. But as you can imagine, when you have a big ridge like this, it won't take much to adjust the track of the system. If this ridge is stronger, the storm might be steered further west than initially indicated. Or if it's weaker, it might escape out to sea faster. We're looking at this simulation. This is showing us vorticity or spin in the atmosphere. And here we can even get a better idea as to what the models say will happen with Lee. This is a European model. And here comes Lee moving off to the west, just north uh, of the Lesser Antilles, heading north of Puerto Rico. And that ridge is still built north of it for a while, not allowing it to turn to the north. And then the turn to the north happens. But check out what's going on here on the east coast. This is why I'm suggesting some caution with this storm. We have some vorticity here as well. If this vorticity were to come down into the southeast United States, it's possible it could either redirect this storm a little bit closer to the east coast or grab it and tug it back closer to the east coast. That's what the GFS model has been showing. Here's the simulation as of this morning. That storm gets pretty close to the eastern United States. Uh, this is a, obviously a long-term simulation. We don't want to take it for face value, but the system does get pretty close to the east coast. And so all I'm really saying here is as we roll this forward, it's not wise to suggest that this storm is definitely going to go out to sea. If we look at some of the individual members on the European, we're looking just at the low pressure systems here. Here comes Lee forming and moving north of the Lesser Antilles, north of Puerto Rico. Again, if you're in this area, got to keep a close eye on it. And then you see things start to spread out. Some of the members are closer to the coast. Some of them are further out to sea. All of them agree it will be a major, major intense hurricane that will be curving up northward. Uh, near or off the east coast of the United States. So if you are on the east coast, we're going to watch this storm very carefully. If you are in the uh, northern uh, or less northern portion of the Lesser Antilles, as well as Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, this whole area, we need to watch this storm really carefully as well. This is likely going to be an intense major hurricane as we head into later this week and this weekend. Be right here with updates. We'll be tracking it all with you and providing the hype-free coverage of this storm, which is likely to become Lee later today on Tuesday. We'll have another update tonight. We'll be back with updates all week. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned.